Hello do-it-yourselfers. Today we are removing wallpaper. A quick disclaimer, if sizing wasn't used when installing the wallpaper and it just went over a coat of paint, it will be a harder task. And if the wallpaper was installed directly onto bare drywall, it will be a complete nightmare. Also, to clear up some common confusion, sizing is actually a paint-like paste that you put on your walls to protect them and to make a wallpaper install easier. It has nothing to do with the actual size of anything. Today, step one is to soak your walls. You will want some drops down. This is a messy and wet process. Use a pump sprayer and fill it with very hot water and a decent splash of a wallpaper remover like Diff or this Roman stuff I'm using here. We are going to want the wallpaper to soak for several minutes. Some bubbling occurring would be a very good sign the moisture is soaking through, which will make it an easy job. Start by getting a corner lifted. You may need a putty knife to get it started. Pull slow at first so the paper itself does not tear. The wallpaper coming off in full or at least big pieces is what we are aiming for. We can and probably should spray it down two or three times and don't rush the soaking process. Even up to 10 minutes of soaking followed by a third or fourth spray is fine. Sometimes the water doesn't penetrate well, in which case we will want to use a wallpaper scoring tool like this guy right here. The scoring tool pokes little holes into the wallpaper which allows the moisture to get under the facing. We don't want to push too hard and poke holes all the way into the actual drywall because that will create some pinholes that should be filled for a nice final product. If we use too much pressure with the scoring tool in the entire room, then we will be fixing potentially thousands of these pinholes. A few here and there is no big deal, but entire room or multiple rooms filled with pinholes is not in the plan. I would suggest doing a small section and removing the wallpaper, making sure you are using appropriate pressure before moving on if you have never used this tool before. Once we have a section scored, we will need to spray again. We can see here the little bit of moisture that soaked through the facing of the wallpaper, which in this case does make getting the facing off easier. This I would say is medium difficulty wallpaper removal. Not having to scrape too hard, but not getting very big pieces off with each pull. In this situation, just score, spray, pull a few pieces, and repeat if it's taking too much effort. I would recommend taking all the facing off before worrying about the wallpaper backing. As you can see here, we are now getting some big pieces as the moisture has had a little more time to soak in. Once all the facing is off, the backing is bare, but dry, and will need to be sprayed again. A pump sprayer really is your best friend on a wallpaper removal project. The backing changes color as you spray it, and it is now time to pull it off. Sometimes backing will come off in big or even full pieces, but today it is being a little bit difficult. Use a flexible putty knife to get it started, then pull the pieces until they tear away. I am using a Purdy brand 1 inch flexible putty knife at the moment. Keep your backing wet. If you are working on a section long enough, keep spraying the rest of the wall intermittently, every 5 minutes or so. Keeping it very wet makes the project easier. Keep working at the wall with your putty knife and pump sprayer until your wall is clear of all wallpaper pieces. Double check near casings and baseboards, that's where some little slivers tend to get stuck or overlooked. This one wall took about 30 minutes with two of us to completely strip down to bare drywall. And that doesn't include the next step, which is washing the glue residue off the wall. So if you're going at this alone and it is being moderately difficult, plan on four to five hours for an average size bedroom. Before getting to wall washing, I want to show you another potential technique for getting the backing off when it's being difficult. Use a six or eight inch drywall knife and scrape it off the wall. In this demonstration, it is working very well and efficiently. If you are able to pull pieces off this size once you get it started with a putty knife, stick to that. But if it's coming off in really small pieces, this is the go-to method. Keep the knife even on the wall. If you put too much pressure on a corner, it will gouge your wall pretty easily. Quick tip when using a putty knife or a mud knife, do not have the angle close to 90 degrees. Rather, keep your angle tight to the wall and maybe even utilize the flex. Step four is washing the walls. No matter how easy or difficult the wallpaper removal is, you always have to wash your walls well. 
If there is a normal amount of glue, I like to start with a bucket of hot water, a scotch pad, and a rough rag or a cut up bath towel. If the wall isn't still wet, give it another quick spray with the pump sprayer, then take the scotch pad, dip it into your bucket of hot water, and scrub your walls down methodically. I personally do about a 4x4 four four foot section at a time, then switch to the towel, dip it in the hot water, wring it out some, and wipe over what I just scrubbed with the scotch pad. If the wall still feels slimy to the touch after this, you will need to keep cleaning that section, alternating between the scotch pad and rag as you see fit. Also, change out your water periodically as it starts to look gross or cool down too much. If there is an unusual and excessive amount of glue, we are going to want to use a drywall knife and trowel it off. If your wall has excessive glue after removing the wallpaper, it may look like this and you will be filling up mud pans of glue. Dealing with glue like this isn't overly hard or time consuming. Just get it wet and saturated and after troweling off the majority of it, get the scotch pad and towel out to finish it off. The most important wallpaper removal tip I have is just don't use it in the first place. And if you're looking to buy a house that has tons of wallpaper and you hate it, just know that it will either cost you a lot of time getting those walls ready to paint or lots of money having someone else do it. So good luck everyone, hope this helps, and don't forget, level up your house.